Mr. Chairman, I thank the members who spoke. I will start with the overview of the legal reforms in our civil, family, and criminal justice systems, which Mr. D'Souza spoke about. In the area of civil justice, my ministry has been working closely with the judiciary, legal practitioners. The aim is to keep legal costs affordable and to reduce the complexity of civil proceedings. We are also studying measures to strengthen the enforcement of uh, judgment, civil judgments. Public consultation is likely to take place later this year. Uh, Mr. Patrick Day asked if we will be raising claims limits in the small claim tribunals. The answer is yes, we will be. Amendments will be introduced this year. Uh, it will allow claims of a higher value, and it, we hope it will allow the claims to be resolved quickly, cost effectively at the SCT. On family justice, uh, members know that in 2014, we made changes, uh, reforms brought about several positive uh, developments, including providing child and family-friendly uh, approach, uh, where the courts look at what's in the interest of the children, how best to deal with it, how to try and move on with as little acrimony as possible. To build on these reforms, my ministry has set up a committee with MSF, as well as family justice courts. We asked them to review and further enhance the family justice system. The report will be out later this year and we will act on it. On criminal justice, I've said earlier during the Home Affairs debate, we want a progressive, balanced, modern criminal justice system. And if you look at it over the years, there have been a series of reforms, each building on the other, uh, the pre-trial disclosure regime in 2010, the CBS, which was in also introduced in 2010, these changes to the Evidence Act in 2012, and in 2015, in a fairly significant move for the government, the government funding legal representation of accused persons through the Criminal Legal Aid Scheme, and now a comprehensive amendments to the CPC and the Evidence Act have been introduced in Parliament earlier this week. Mr. D'Souza asked whether we will have three High Court judges um, to sit in trials for capital cases. We haven't yet seen a need to review this, but it does not mean no. Uh, members will know that since 2012, if a person is uh, sentenced to death and chooses not to appeal, a confirmation hearing must still be held by the Court of Appeal. Uh, that ensures that the imposition of the capital punishment is always reviewed by the apex court of at least three judges. So there is already a two-level process with at least three judges of appeal looking at the matter, but we will review the point made by D'Souza, Mr. D'Souza. Uh, 